Turn the lights back on. Wow. Retro Electro Tech. When real audio ruled the world. world. Greetings once again. This is Ernest with Retro Electro Tech. And I have here on the bench a late 60s Ampeg B15NF bass amplifier. This unit was brought in for an overall health check, including a look into the biasing of the two output tubes. Now in this case, um, I have here two Mesa 6L6 GCs provided by the customer already installed in the amp. Nice getter spots. And um, I don't really anticipate an issue with the tubes, so you know we'll see once we get to that point. But I just want to take an overall look at where the voltages are sitting throughout this amp and whether or not they correspond to factory specifications or at least within the ballpark. That being said, there's going to be some variations with what is laid down in the specs versus what is obtained in the real world where there is a difference in line voltages as well as uh, component values that also vary the voltage readings that we'll encounter. So the point is, as long as we're not dipping too high or too low, you know, in which case we would see the uh, function of the amp compromised. So first things first, um, starting with the power supply, you know, minus the power transformer, at least at this point. And the reason is the uh, power transformer is at least working according to the customer who had the amp powered up uh, not very long ago. However, if I do find a problem with it, I'll cross that bridge then. Otherwise, um, I want to get this amp returned to its original configuration, starting with, um, let me reach over here, starting with this uh, 5U4GB rectifier tube. Um, I'll be returning to the um, 5AR4 or GZ34, same animal, and I'll be putting that back into service, um, which is, of course, the original rectifier for this amp. Now, it's not that there's a problem with this, uh, you know, 5U4 GB rectifier tube in and of itself, but there are some things that need to be addressed. First, the uh, 5U4 GB has a 3 amp current draw or thereabouts, which is um, pressed right up against this transformer's 3 amp limit, which is uh, reason enough for me to tone it down and return to the 5AR4, which has a 1.9 or let's say 2 amp current draw. Additionally, the uh, voltage drop of the 5U4 GB is um, greater than that of the uh, 5AR4, which isn't a bad thing, not at all, but um, that has a tendency to contribute toward a more grittier or even a uh, slightly muddier sound, for lack of a better term, uh, due to the amount of sag uh, exhibited. Now, I'm not a bass player, so to each his own as to what sound a person wants to squeeze out of their amp. However, the customer did mention um, some muddier sonic characteristics uh, when hitting certain notes that he really didn't like. Now, of course, there may be other reasons for that, but again, I want to get the rectifier back to factory, which has a negligible um, voltage drop or sag in comparison to the 5U4GB. So we'll tighten up the sag in the rectifier and work our way down the line, getting all the other component values brought back into spec. Now, I'd rather um, start with a piece of audio gear uh, brought back to factory spec and work out any bugs from that point. Um, you know, rather than, you know, playing this tug of war with a modified or otherwise um, out of spec piece of equipment. Now, let's move on. Um, next is the electrolytic filter caps and um, starting with these big blue Mongo Changos ran in series. Um, these were mounted um, in this area here. I'm just going to set them in yeah, right about there. And uh, they block access to the bottom of the uh, tube sockets, which I don't like. Plus, you know, it's these are not really a neat and tidy install. Um, it could be better. So anyways, the original in that position, um, it was a, uh, let me see, I believe it was a 30 mic 600 volt cap. And um, each of these uh, caps here are 110 mics at 350 volts. And again, they're ran in series which will give us half the capacitance and double the voltage rating. So we should have like 55 mics at 700 volts. I'm gonna just put them on the cap meter and see what we got. Okay, so we have, um, what, 55.273 something. It's, well, it's obviously bouncing around, but you get the point. Now these are nice um, spray caps that were installed, but um, regardless, they're from 1987 and should go. The uh, capacitance reading, as I mentioned before, is not a surefire indication that they are not starting to internally degrade. So again, just the age alone and for reliability's sake, it's best to recap. 
especially uh, filter caps and power supply sections that also live in the hotter environments of tube amps. Uh, they just take more punishment. And these um, two electrolytics here stacked in parallel within this bias circuit stick out a bit too much and just take up more room than necessary. Again, not a nice, clean, and tidy install. These would be better served by a single high-quality cap in this position. Not to mention, I believe the date code indicates um, these caps were manufactured in June of 1990. So again, it's best to just replace them. Now there's this um, multi-section capacitor can on the top side here that appears to date from around September of 1966. Um, therefore, it would be a little bit more than wise to replace it. Now, there are comparable multi-cap cams available to replace uh, this one and preserve the original look for the most part, um, which is going to be a little less uh, involved from a labor perspective slash cost perspective. Nonetheless, there are other options. I can leave the, uh, the can on the top side in place, um, disconnect it from the circuit, of course, and perhaps mount some uh, replacement caps in, um, in this section somewhere. Or restuff the can with uh, replacements. Now the latter of which would be uh, quite a bit costlier and um, you know it's pretty involved. So if we mount a comparable replacement can I'll of course return the original to the customer uh, so he could pass it along if he decides to sell the amp or whatever. Um, that way the new owner can opt to remount it um, and have the above mentioned workarounds performed at a later date if so desired. Now we're moving on toward the home stretch. Yeehaw! As mentioned, I'll be going through this amp, checking resistor values, uh, capacitors not mentioned, checking potentiometers, uh, thoroughly flushing them out, and if any need replacing, we can cross that bridge as needed. I will also be cleaning all the tube sockets thoroughly, retentioning them as needed. We also need to replace the original cord, swapping the uh, two-pronger here for a three-pronger, it's a liability for me not to do it and um, putting a three prong you know with a ground uh, is a potential lifesaver to the amp user if the amp chassis should become energized uh, for whatever reason the ground switch here will be disconnected of course when the uh, three prong uh, cord is installed but obviously the ground switch will be left in place to keep uh, the look original so that being said, um, everything in this video thus far is essentially the meat and potatoes of what should be done right off the bat. So I'm going to end this video here, continue checking all component values as mentioned, compile a materials list, etc., and leave the rest for the customer to decide upon. That's really what it comes down to in the end. Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ernest with Retro Electrotech, and what you're looking at is the soft and soothing glow of vacuum tubes. This delightful glow here, as well as this one, are the 6L6GC output tubes from the Ampeg B15NF. So sit back and relax with that glass of wine, hand in hand with that special someone, and enjoy the ambiance together. Okay, enough of all that huggy kissy, let's get to work. Um, I've carefully gone through the uh, schematic of this amplifier and assured that all voltages are sitting well within acceptable tolerances. And in fact they are, um, especially considering the difference in uh, line voltages of today versus the line voltages of yesteryear when this amp was manufactured. So um, let's get down to checking the uh, biasing of this unit. Um, now that being the mission, this uh, amplifier is uh, fixed biased at a negative 50 volts DC to the grids of um, these uh, two over here. Um, there's one here and the location of the other is tucked behind here. The uh, two um, 6L6 GC output tubes that, um, that we were admiring uh, just a moment ago. And here's the um, bias circuit that I'm referring to that um, feeds the uh, grids of the two um right up in here feeds the grids of these two uh, 6l6 gcs so that being said i confirmed all specified voltages um sitting just about where they should throughout the uh, bias circuit
Okay, so first, um, with the amp power down and unplugged and capacitors discharged, I measured the uh, resistance between the center tap, um, in other words, pin 8 of um, the uh, 5AR4 rectifier, um, to the uh, plates of um, each tube. In other words, um, here's one tube here and pin 3. And my results for one half are 148 ohms or 148 point, um, let's just say 148.3. And I also have another um, reading on the other side of 148.3.4 um, as well. Now I've powered up and will measure the voltage drop across the uh, same points. I will, however, pause this video and let the tube stabilize um, between measurements. Um, so here we go. So reading one has uh, stabilized around 7.48 volts. And reading 2 has stabilized around uh, 5.8586. Now I'm measuring the uh, plate voltages at each output tube. And as you can see, I have 497 volts here. And about 497 volts on the other plate. Okay, one thing I want to quickly mention is that because I was pausing the camera, um, it, you know, and restarting it, it may have appeared that I was moving through things fast, but that wasn't the case. I was powering down the amp, discharging capacitors, etc., and always working in the chassis one handed very carefully. Safety first, always. Okay, now for some math. So we read our resistance uh, measurements um, from the center tap to, um, in other words, pin 8 of the uh, rectifier to the um, uh, plates of each output tube, pin three. And our uh, ohms readings were 148.4, both measurements. And then our voltage drop across the same test points were um, one reading of 5.86 volts and the other of 7.48. So, in order to get our um, plate current, what we have to do is divide our voltage into our resistance, and that gave us um, one reading of 39.4 milliamps and the other at 50 milliamps. And then we measured our plate voltage and got 497 volts. Now you multiply that 497 volts by the uh, plate current and we arrived at our plate dissipation of 19.58 watts for one output tube and 25.04 watts plate dissipation that is for the other tube. This is a poor man's shoe production.